most of my YouTube audience doesn't know this, but I am making a short dart Talon Mag compatible strife. Now this will be short dart only as you can see. And if we jump right into how I did this, there's these pieces that I found on a YouTube video. And what these do is you print them out. Um, they're on Thingiverse, if anybody's curious, I'll probably post a link in the description. But you just line them up like this, and you mark these out. And once you have them all marked out, you cut the lines, and of course these two are for the other side. Um, there is a detailed video on how to do this, so I will not recreate it. But once you've cut everything out, you can take your 3D printed pieces, and there's three pieces in total. Um, the right and left side of the magwell, and then there is a new mag release. Put all those in, glue it together, and then that's a short dart strife. Now I am waiting on another part to come in that I haven't ordered yet, so probably should do that soon. But once I have that part in, this strife will be able to be completed. Because I'm waiting on pieces for that, and because I don't want to use red filament for this strife, i going to be using orange, but I ordered that as well. I'm sure many of you have seen this strife that is sitting on my wall. It's a metal barrel for it, metal trigger, the not printed, the injection molded Chris Vector kit, 3, 3D printed battery door, and most of this stuff is not 3D printed, and I did that on purpose to make it a little bit stronger because injection molding is stronger than regular PLA. The problem with this is that I take one of these mags over here you can see that it is a angled talon mag and I'm sure there is a way to get around this but my issue with it is that I'm going to be using this in a competition and when you're in a fast-paced competition you don't want any errors you don't want your blaster to do anything like out of the ordinary you just want it to function the same way every time now if I could manage to load Two darts into here with one hand. Surprisingly harder than I thought it would be. I think I'm actually gonna have to put three in here. So once I have three loaded in here, you can see how much of an angle they're actually at. And those will be at an angle all the way down. Now that would be fine if these darts didn't move so much. Because you can tap it to the back. But eventually, as you're moving around, as you're running, the darts will push forwards like that. And as you know, this uh, rubber tip has a lot more friction than the foam on the back of the dart. Every once in a while, as I'm shooting, if I try to do a rapid fire especially, the darts will no longer come back up, and they'll actually stop right about here. Then I'll have to smack the side of the mag, or the side of the blaster, and they'll pop back up. Now that's not too much of an issue, but it's enough of an issue that I do not want to have to deal with it when I have a game that only lasts like 30 seconds to a minute. So, to avoid that, what I'm going to be doing, as you can see with this drive, I do not need an adapter at all. Now this drive has an adapter in it. This adapter, as you can see, is only for the angled mags. I do not have an adapter for straight mags. Now, while I could go ahead and just buy one, what I'm going to do instead is make the very complicated decision to make this strife look like this. So I'm going to cut that same section out, probably sand the Nerf logo off. And the problem with that is I'm going to have to modify this as well. The top rail is going to have to be a little bit shorter. This is going to have to be a little bit shorter, which I might be able to do right here. Um, and then of course cut this out and like I said before I'm gonna be using this red 3d printed part so I'm gonna cut this and then I'll be right back all right so I got both sides cut as you can see they fit together pretty well there is a little bit of a gap but that can be fixed now the plan here is this works pretty good as a template um, there is a ridge in here and a ridge in here this side does need to be cut down a little bit more than this side does which means that this side locks in a little bit better. Um, if you can see that it kind of just snaps in and then it stays in there pretty well. This side, however, if I try to do that, it would literally just fall out. But, um, besides that, once we have this side together, 
And then this side is a little bit trickier because of the wiring. I don't feel like unsoldering everything, so I'm just going to leave it and shorten the wires later. But put this side in, put this side in, which as you can see those two pieces that I was talking about, they go um, right around the screw post for the, um, the battery door. That's how it should look pretty much. Alright, don't worry about that. So the tools that I use to do this is a Dremel tool with a cutoff wheel. I have a, um, I think it's, yeah, it's Dremel 3000, which is irrelevant. You can use any Dremel tool. And when I marked out the line, say, um, say this is the line, this is the side that it needs to be cut to. I cut on this side of the line with the Dremel tool, and then I took these snips that came with one of my 3D printers, and I snipped it right to where it needed to be. And then, just to give it a little bit smoother of a finish, because this is a very small like cutting surface, it can leave it jagged. I took a sanding block, which this one's a little bit bendy, it's not preferable, but it still works. Use a sanding block with some, I think it's 120 grit. Sanded it down nice. And then in the areas like this, that I could not snip away, and I don't feel like doing that with a Dremel tool, um, I used a file, seems a lot more accurate, just in my opinion, and just file that down to where it needs to be. It takes a little bit longer, but it'll give you a better quality product in the end. So, I have all these pieces, now we need to put them together, and I could use a um, acetone and take some scrap pieces from the shell, melt it, make like a putty. I've done that before, it works, but I kind of want to try this stuff out, because it says specifically on here, would focus you can see that it says ABS and it bonds all kinds of other plastics as well but it says 20 minute um, drying time I think 20 minute set time and this is ABS so if this specifically bonds ABS that'll be nice it's a two-part epoxy you just mix it up so what I'm gonna do this is actually PLA I hope it bonds to this if not we'll just use a different type of glue so I'm gonna use the glue and glue this piece onto here, glue the pieces together and clamp them. And then I'm actually going to screw the two pieces of the shell together. And there is an issue, um, there is an issue of when you put these together, you wanna make sure that the flywheels are as aligned as possible. And normally you could just take a, um, like a straight edge and put it across the top and just kinda of like line it up as best you can and set it down and try not to move it too much. I have a more, um, a method that I think will work a little bit better. So with the vector kit, this piece right here, it actually adds a front rail, like an end strike rail. And then this is a end strike to Picatinny rail. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the shell together and then I'm going to use this and use the set screws on the top to kind of like clamp it down theoretically because this seems really sturdy it doesn't seem like it's going to bend at all so theoretically this will keep it straight and it'll keep my flywheels aligned because when i was lining it up it looked like it needed to go like this just a little bit so i'm going to do that um it's probably going to be maybe tomorrow by the time the glue is dry probably let it dry overnight and once the glue is dry i'll come back to it and finish up the build all right so i got this all back together i got the pieces glued in although this is a bit loose i'll probably have to Throw some more glue on there a little bit later. This is what the outside looks like. It's really rough. I'm going to have to sand that down, which I will sand down, make smooth, and probably uh, do some touch-up paint to make it match. The inside, I'm going to need a little bit more reinforcement up here. And there is quite a bit of glue under here. And I'm probably, um, yeah, that hole right there, that hole's gone. I filled that in with glue just to help, like, kind of reinforce it. But yeah, um, this just has the um, it's a worker metal cage with worker flywheels that have uh, the grooves in them. And I believe these are 3S Kraken motors, so it should have um, decent FPS. This barrel um, mainly just lets the dart have a path to escape past the uh, vector kit. And I'll probably end up putting a bearing scar on the end, uh, similar to this. 
And I've heard that the bearing scar is preferably as close to the cage as possible. So I might end up having to mount it closer in, but we'll we'll get to that when we get to it. Um, I actually lost this spring. So that spring is completely gone. It doesn't matter because there's a spring on the inside of this switch. Uh, the only like bad part about it is that it makes the um, it makes this really loose. So I'm going to uh, throw the rest of this together, and then I'm going to show you what I did with the battery compartment. So I got it all put back together. Got the XC60 connector, which is the main connector that I use, soldered on. And you can see there's a zip tie. Now that is the wire going from the motor to the switch. And I just zip tied that on that little spot right there. As you can see this big gaping hole right here. I cut that out partially with a Dremel tool and then finished it up with the tin snips. So I, or those aren't tin snips, I guess they're just snips. I don't really know. Either way, um, another zip tie right here. And that's one wire going from the motor, one wire going from the switch to the battery. And that just keeps everything um, like together and keeps it in one place. Now with this cut out, this battery just barely fits in here. Now the plan is this little dude can go right here. And then that leaves just enough room for a lipo alarm. And then you can see this big excess amount sticking out. Um, that would be a problem if I had a stock battery door, but I do not. I'm actually printing a red one to match all this currently as we speak. That'll be done um, after about four hours. But once it's on, you can see that the the battery was kind of flush with um, the shell, and then that XT6 connector just kind of sits up here. And these holes do offer just a tiny bit of ventilation for the battery. It doesn't need that much, but I guess anything helps. Now that this is all together, I'm going to do a small firing demonstration. And then this video is getting kind of long, so I'll probably end up making all this fit in another video. So just like I said I was going to do, I got the red battery cover printed, the side of the blaster sanded down a little bit better, and we're using charcoal darts in this demonstration, but besides that, a few people online actually told me to remove the aluminum barrel on the front because it'll hinder performance. However, as you can see in a few of these shots, they are just flying way off course from hitting the inside of the blaster. So I'm going to have to put some type of short barrel in there if I want to use the vector kit. As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.